Have you ever started decluttering an area and suddenly realized that the problem you're facing goes far beyond having too much stuff? That just happened to me. Today we're going to tackle decluttering and refreshing my laundry room while I tell you an honest cautionary tale with a happy ending. If you find yourself relating to any of this, it would be great if you hit the subscribe button and join the journey we're on here. So have you ever had a problem in your home that was stressing you out because you imagined that it would just take way too much effort, maybe too much money, and too much time to fix it? Oh boy, do I relate to that. For more than 10 years, I felt overwhelmed with the state of our laundry room. It felt impossible for me to fix it. The closet and cabinets were jammed full of who knows what. The walls and trim showed lots of wear. The cheap laundry hampers I kept buying quickly broke, and the cleaning supplies were all over the place. Because I have chronic health challenges I have to work around, and a busy family life, I just couldn't summon the energy to fix it. I often dreamed of hiring someone to come in and rescue me. Maybe they would paint the room. Maybe they would organize the closets. Maybe they would simply hold my hand and commiserate. I felt guilty about not taking care of the room. It was hard for me to summon the mental energy to clean it, even though it's relatively a small room. And I have been grateful to have it. This is the first time we've ever had an actual laundry room. For most of our lives, the washer and dryer were in small closets, an unfinished basement, or the garage, and maybe I even had to go to a laundry mat. But now I have a laundry room, so why wasn't I maintaining it? I think that part of the problem is that we get used to the state of things. I mean, it's impossible to think deeply about every problem in every room every time you enter them. It would just be too much. But still, the problems are there, and our minds and bodies know it. So the stress goes underground. Unfortunately, if we don't do something about it, the rooms will continue to fall apart, unless you do something to stop this from happening. Our homes are subject to the second law of thermodynamics, entropy. Entropy means that everything deteriorates. When we were shopping for our home, we made a big deal about wanting one where we wouldn't have to do anything. We'd just come out of an 11-year home remodel. We had done all of it, and we were just so tired. We wanted to just move into this home and live, which is a common feeling among home buyers. But of course, the polished condition of the home was only temporary. Entropy was at work, before we knew it, we were replacing and repairing water heaters, furnaces, air conditioners, kitchen appliances, the washers and dryers twice, flooring, paint, and decks. The pergola and side fence fell over because their footers rotted out. Lighting fixtures became seriously out of date. The sprinkling system had to be replaced. We found out the yard had no topsoil, so we had to bring in 27 loads of it so plants could grow. We had to cut down fruit trees when they died and put up a fence to keep out deer and replace sinks and toilets. It's just the way life in a home goes and we were silly to think that we weren't going to have to do anything to it. But sometimes the situation in your home creeps up and it may be a smaller one that becomes so annoying that you start to avoid dealing with it. Avoidance brings immediate emotional relief, but comes with long-term negative consequences. It keeps us stuck. The issue isn't the discomfort we feel, but how we react to it. The more we avoid difficult situations, the easier it becomes to avoid other difficult situations, and soon avoiding things becomes a pattern.
When we let our homes deteriorate or get cluttered without doing anything about it, we strengthen patterns of avoidance. Cluttering is an avoidant pattern. It's created when we have trouble making decisions, or maybe when we use shopping as a means of making ourselves feel better about something else that's bothering us. Cluttering is more than collecting. It's not enjoying fully what we already own or appreciating what we have. Cluttering is blind. It doesn't and sometimes can't see what we actually have. This blindness causes us to forget what we have and then often we rebuy things we don't need. Cluttering bothers us. It makes us feel kind of unsettled and maybe even bad about ourselves. We may feel embarrassed. Clutter can affect our health because stress increases our cortisol levels. Cortisol is the human stress hormone that goes into our brains and stimulates the alarm center, the amygdala. This kills important neurons in the hippocampus, which manages visual space memory. These neurons calm down the amygdala and reduce stress. This all means that constant stress changes our brain, and these changes make us even more sensitive to stress. It took me quite a while to understand how much clutter was affecting my mental and physical health. It was just always there annoying me in the background because I didn't let myself think about it. I avoided it and I developed a pattern of buying things to make myself feel better, which just made the problem worse. We also have a cultural practice of keeping backups of cleaning supplies of food we continually use, which is fine, but because everything was cluttered and disorganized, we sometimes bought more than we intended because we didn't know what we had. For instance, I'd think we didn't have hand soap, so I'd buy some and put it in the big closet. Then my husband thought we didn't have hand soap and would buy some and put it in the cabinet over the washer. The only way to permanently solve this problem was to have a single place, a well-defined place that we both know about, to store the hand soap. Now, add my failure of getting rid of cleaning supplies I no longer use to this problem. When I was emptying the closet, I found cleaning supplies I'd had since the late 1970s. Those unused cleaning supplies had traveled all around the state of Utah, to Biloxi, Mississippi twice, to Montana, Oklahoma, California, and then back to Utah. They are finally gone. The laundry room was full of mistakes and indecision. It was a testimony to my pattern of avoiding stressful situations and becoming blind to small problems that I might easily fix. What you are witnessing in this video is me waking up. I decided to declutter the closet, but then I realized that if I just decluttered it, the closet would still look terrible because it needed to be painted and organized in a way we could maintain it. It hadn't been painted since our house was built 30 years ago. And I knew I had to do something about the cabinets over the washer and dryer because the supplies were all mixed up and some of them belonged in the closet. And then I finally really looked at the walls and the trim and realized that I just had to do something to fix them. If I didn't, decluttering and organizing just wouldn't make me feel better. And the light fixture in that room, it was just gross. I hated it so much that I wasn't cleaning it. I know, that's so embarrassing to say, but it's true. The hampers were broken. The laundry baskets were dirty. We had these three rechargeable batteries for the vacuum and only two outlets, and I had just piled them on the floor. I just had not made myself think through what to do. The state of the laundry room wasn't logical. It was emotional. So I woke up. I decided that I'd fix the entire room. I bought wallpaper I really liked without worrying about what anyone else would think of it. I bought an inexpensive but pretty light fixture. 
I bought baskets to organize the large closet. I decluttered, threw things away, painted, bought sturdy, pretty hampers, cleaned, and hung up art I already owned. I think the room turned out beautifully, and it only cost $400. We love it so much that I keep finding family members just standing in there and looking around. My husband is already asking me to wallpaper other rooms. The best part is that I feel good about the laundry room. I mean really good. It's such a relief to have solved that relatively small problem. I feel like a heavy burden has been lifted. And when I look in the closet, the closet I can barely stand open, I can see exactly what we have, and it makes me smile. So what can you do if you're in a similar situation? Here are a few ideas for you. Connect the avoided task to a larger goal of value. Decluttering a closet might not be exciting, but if you Think about, I'm going to create a more peaceful and organizing space to make me feel better during my day. It becomes a little bit more appealing. Focus on the emotional benefits of tackling the task. Be realistic about any physical limitations. Be mindful of unrealistic renovation projects that you see on social media. Instead, focus on creating a space that's functional and reflects your own personal style. Remember that expensive renovations aren't the only path to a beautiful space. If you're having trouble figuring out what is clutter, I have a video that can really help you.